very entertaining. Yeah, it'd be yeah. decent. Yeah. Speaking of decent and entertaining, our mm-hmm. drive-in special this week is the Quatermass Experiment from 1955. And we may have trouble saying Quatermass, Quatermass, Quarter... Not, it's not Quatermass because there's no R in it. For a long time, I thought that was Quatermass. And yet it's the not. various actors pronounce a different way in the show, too. Yeah, so throughout we'll the movie, see. it's pronounced. <laughs> so, like I said, we're about... A third of the way through the Universal movies at this point, and Quatermass is the first of the Hammer films. Mm-hmm. There's 1955. many, many Hammer horror movies, and this was really their first. They were around as a company before this, just like Universal was, but this is the first big sci-fi slash horror movie that they put out that mm-hmm. was successful. Mm-hmm. And it launched Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing and all those guys a little later on. But not yet. But not yet. No. This one here, we got the director of Val Guest, written by Richard Landau, stars Brian Donlevy, Jack Warner, and Marja Dean, also known as The Creeping Unknown. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Still black and white. Yes, they had an independent color, yeah. 1955. They're getting close, though. <laughs> well, they had color movies. This just I, wasn't one I of them. know they did. Yeah, this, this wasn't one of them. Yeah. yeah. A couple is making out down on the farm. Literally taking a roll in the hay. Mm-hmm. When a strange yeah. thing comes down from the sky and damages the house. Is it a meteor? No, that's no meteor. That's a rocket. That's a rocket ship. Yeah. And fire trucks, police, the ambulances show up along with a crowd of hundreds of spectators to see the rocket. And it's a rocket. It's stuck on the ground like if you took a big dart and jabbed mm. it in the dirt. Too hot to open. Too hot to approach. It's... A crowd of experts led by Dr. Quatermass head to the rocket in their VW bus. It's Quatermass's Q1 project, and he doesn't know why it crashed. It was in space for 57 hours. They kind of lost track of it. It came back down. And he launched it before getting permission, so his career is on the line if something goes wrong. Yeah, he just said, you know, these three guys and sent them up. And, Can we launch yeah. the rocket now? Sure. No. Okay. Yeah, do it anyway. <laughs> and he does. Yeah, he's a do-it-anyway kind of guy. Yeah, he has. He, he likes to get things done. Yeah. <laughs> After a great deal of debate, they opened the door. Three men went up on the rocket, but only one, Victor, came back down. And he seems to be in shock. He ain't right, yeah. He's gaunt, his skin is rubbery, and he's very unhealthy looking. He's not only catatonic, his fingerprints don't match the ones taken before his flight. Hmm. Hmm. They find some kind of jelly in the cracks of the ship, and the medical doctor thinks it's the remains of the missing crew members. Ew. They developed yeah. the film for the flight recorder and watched to see what happened. They watched the two astronauts die, but there's no explanation for the missing bodies. Some kind of energy wave or something that they ran into. There's some Just a distortion. Just flash and they and... all fall over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One man comes to break Victor out of the hospital and dies when Victor touches him. He runs into his girlfriend, who finds him, but he gets away from her. Quatermass suggests that maybe the rocket passed through some kind of energy creature that took over Victor. You know, there's, but you didn't mention the reason that he gets away from her. Why is that? He, she sees his hand. Which is now... Part cactus? He smashes a cactus on the table, and then he becomes part cactus. Yeah, and his hand is, yeah, and she gets a sight of that, and she's like, ah, and pulls over to the side, and he runs away. Yeah. Yeah. So Quatermass thinks it's an energy creature that took over Victor, and he may be right. Victor then kills a pharmacist by draining the life force out of him. The next morning, Victor wakes up near a little girl playing with dolls. Not like a Frankenstein kind of scene there. And it is kind of reminiscent of mm-hmm. you know, that. Mm-hmm. He runs off, though, rather than kill the girl. He's still sort of got his right mind. Yeah, yeah, he's fighting it. But the alien, whatever it is, is winning. Yeah. Yeah. That night, he shows up at the zoo. He doesn't look quite so human anymore, and he kills several of the big cats, draining off their life force. What do we look for now, the inspector asks. You'll know it when you see it, Quatermass says. Is the big slime trail all the way across. (laughs) Like a big slug leaves a trail. (laughs) Yeah. A homeless woman reports seeing an enormous creepy crawly thing crawling on a wall. There's and she's creepy crawling and, there, going on there. and that's kind of a comic relief too cuz she's a chronic drunk who I oh, guess yeah. regularly comes into the police station reporting her hallucinations. And this time What? This time it was real? <laughs> I wasn't imagining it. <laughs> she's genuinely surprised. 
It eventually kills a man at Westminster <laughs> Abbey, and everyone converges on the spot at exactly the same time that the BBC is broadcasting a show there. And he doesn't look human at all anymore. No, he's a yeah. blob. Yeah. It's 20 feet across and ready to reproduce. They divert all the electrical power from London to zap the thing. They do finally destroy it, and Quatermass then says he's going to start again with a new rocket. Dun, dun, dun. He's a determined man, a determined scientist. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first sci-fi based horror film that was hugely successful and launched the sci-fi horror craze of the 50s and 60s. It was also Hammer's first big hit and their first real horror movie. And we'll be looking at a lot of Hammer's work in the coming year. We will. This is a cult classic and I can kind of see the appeal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. a sort of scientific detective story with a mystery, a monster, and even some action. The monster's pretty cheesy at the end, but you can see where they tried a lot of new things. Like the astronauts walking around on the walls of their spaceship. He walks across the floor, mm -hmm. and then he goes up and the wall. Up. Yeah. And it's kind of a neat... You've seen this effect before, but probably not a lot in 1955. In 1955, it would have been a very new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Did you like it? I did. Overall, yeah. 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 It I had did. some issues. Uh -huh. and some, it was a little but slow it, by but modern movies, but it, it was good. It's a classic 1950s... Science fiction-y. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I guess there was a Quatermass TV series from 1953, BBC. That I don't know how long it ran, but this was based on those characters and some of the stuff that went on there. And they did a remake in 2005. Of the original? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to see that. We need to see point. that. Yeah. yeah. And next week we'll see Quatermass 2 and talk about that one, so stay tuned there. We cheated. Lot, we already saw we it. We watched all three. But we're not going to talk about it yet. We liked them so much, we binged them one night. <laughs> we did, yeah. yeah. We watched all three consecutively. 